Welcome to our The China Briefing Show. Today, we delve into three captivating stories making headlines. First, Chinese President Xi Jinping is taking a bold step to position China as a peacemaker in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, hosting high-level talks and sending envoys to foster peace. Next, American intelligence officials have raised alarms about Russia, China, and Iran actively seeking to influence the upcoming U.S. presidential election by recruiting Americans to spread their propaganda. Lastly, Singapore's Temasek Holdings is shifting its investment focus, planning to inject a whopping $30 billion into the U.S. market over the next five years, marking a significant pivot away from China. Please stay tuned for more in-depth coverage on these stories. Japan Times Chinese President Xi Jinping is intensifying his efforts to establish himself as a mediator in Russia's ongoing conflict with Ukraine, despite mounting criticism from the US and Europe, which accuse Beijing of bolstering the Kremlin's military actions. With both Moscow and Kiev under increasing pressure domestically and internationally to find a resolution, China recently hosted its first high-ranking Ukrainian official since the war began in 2022. Foreign Minister Wang Yi conveyed to his Ukrainian counterpart, Dmitry Kuleba, that the moment was not yet suitable for peace talks, but noted that both sides were showing a willingness to negotiate. Following this diplomatic outreach, Beijing sent its special envoy, Li Hui, to Brazil, South Africa, and Indonesia to foster conditions conducive to resuming peace talks, targeting nations that have refrained from imposing US-led sanctions on Russia. Japan Times American intelligence officials have revealed that Russia, China, and Iran are actively recruiting Americans to disseminate propaganda that furthers their interests in the lead-up to the U.S. presidential election. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence reported that some U.S. citizens are knowingly aiding these foreign governments by promoting narratives that align with the interests of these foreign actors. Additionally, the report highlighted that other Americans have been unwittingly manipulated into supporting these foreign agendas, underscoring the complex and covert nature of foreign interference in U.S. democratic processes. Japan Times, representatives from Russia and China have challenged the legality of new U.S. claims to an extensive section of the seabed floor, which includes potential resource-rich areas. During a session of the International Seabed Authority in Kingston, Jamaica, they argued that these U.S. claims lack a foundation in international law and should be dismissed. The debate arose in response to recent U.S. assertions that would extend its continental shelf by approximately 1 million square kilometers across the Bering Sea, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and Gulf of Mexico. Countries adhering to the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea must undergo a rigorous international process to determine the boundaries of their underwater continental shelves, a process the U.S. is currently navigating. South China Morning Post reports that Singapore's state-owned Temasek Holdings plans to invest $30 billion US dollars in the US market over the next five years, shifting focus from China due to geopolitical tensions. Jane Atherton, Temasek's head of North America, noted that the Americas will continue to receive the largest capital allocation. This year marked the first time in a decade that Temasek's investments in North and South America surpassed those in China. The firm's portfolio now includes 22% in the Americas, 19% in China, and 27% in Singapore. Atherton highlighted that Temasek is navigating geopolitical constraints by taking passive public equity stakes in semiconductor companies and avoiding investments in geopolitically sensitive areas in China. Instead, the firm is focusing on electric vehicle makers and biotech firms in China, while in the US, it aims to invest in AI-related firms, semiconductor, and infrastructure plays such as data centers. Hong Kong stocks slid on Tuesday as investors anticipated data indicating further contraction in China's manufacturing sector, reports South China Morning Post. The Hang Seng Index dropped 1.2% to 17,023.75, erasing most of Monday's gains. The Tech Index fell 1.4%, and the Shanghai Composite Index hit a six-month low, declining 0.7%. Key stocks like Meituan, BYD, Li Ning, and Mengyo Dairy saw significant losses. Investors remain cautious ahead of the PMI Manufacturing Index release, expected to show a decline to 49.4 in June from 49.5 in May. This has led to the Hang Seng Index heading towards a second consecutive month of declines, 
positioning Hong Kong among the worst performing major global markets. Meanwhile, biotech firm Wuxi Aptech reported a 20% drop in net profit, though its shares rose 4.7% as analysts found the results in line with expectations. Other Asian markets also experienced declines, with Japan's Nikkei 225, Australia's S&P ASX 200, and South Korea's Kospi all retreating. South China Morning Post highlights a debate on xenophobia in Singapore sparked by opposition politician Lim Teen's comments about a foreign girl featured in National Day posters. Lim questioned why a non-Singaporean was used in a poster celebrating National Day, which led to a heated discussion on social media. Tan Jong Pegar Town Council and MP Alvin Tan defended the inclusion, stating that Singapore is a cosmopolitan nation that welcomes friends from around the world. Experts warn that while xenophobia may rise amid geopolitical and economic uncertainties, targeting a child for political gain could backfire. Singapore relies heavily on foreign labor, with non-residents making up a significant portion of the population. The government has tightened immigration policies, raising salary thresholds for employment passes. Analysts like Mustafa Izzuddin and Leong Chan-hung note that xenophobia is often exploited for political mileage, but emphasize that celebrating Singapore's diversity should be inclusive. Natalie Pang adds that many Singaporeans resonate with the nation's multicultural roots, making the targeting of a foreign child particularly contentious. Deutsche Welle, as the 2024 US presidential election looms, experts anticipate a surge in foreign interference, with Russia likely to be the main player. FBI Director Christopher Wray has confirmed the interest of multiple foreign actors in the upcoming vote, echoing concerns from the Microsoft Threat Analysis Center about increasing online threats from Russian sources. Russia's previous interference in the 2016 election was extensive, utilizing bots and hacking democratic servers, prompting the US intelligence community to heighten its focus on foreign meddling. Social media giants like Amazon, Google, Meta, and TikTok have pledged to adopt measures to prevent AI tools from disrupting elections. While Russia is expected to be the primary disruptor, China, Iran, and Cuba may also attempt to influence outcomes, albeit on a smaller scale. The use of deepfakes, although a concern, has not yet proven to be a significant threat, with traditional fake news stories still garnering more attention. Experts like Stephen Slick and Corey Zoli highlight the difficulty in gauging the full extent of these operations, given the classified nature of much of the intelligence. Washington Post, in their Olympics opener, the US women's basketball team, led by WNBA MVPs AJA Wilson and Brianna Stewart, triumphed over Japan with a 102-76 victory, despite a lackluster outside shooting performance. The Americans leveraged their interior size advantage, scoring heavily in the paint and dominating the rebounding battle. The absence of Caitlin Clark, a rookie sensation who has captivated fans and media alike, was felt in the subdued atmosphere of the game. The US women played to a smaller, less engaged crowd compared to other matches, with Japanese fans outnumbering American supporters. Wilson and Stewart's stellar performances highlighted the team's strength, but the ongoing debate over Clark's exclusion from the Olympic roster persisted. South Carolina coach Dawn Staley suggested that Clark's recent WNBA form might have warranted her inclusion. Despite the team's dominance, the gap between their consistent excellence and the recognition they receive remains significant, with Clark's absence underscoring the potential impact of her star power on and off the court. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.
Waking up to wonders, checking nature blunders. Got our rockets flying while the oceans are sighing. Lasers in the sky now, holograms we say wow. Quarks and 